All right, Witch House, we are live. So everyone, give it up. We got Witch House 40K with us today. We are chilling, chilling, having a great time. Yes, and sir. Um, yeah, welcome in. I'm happy that you're able to do this with us today. Hell yeah, bro, what's up? Chilling, dude, chilling. I'm waking up, really. I mean, actually, I've been up, but I guess I'm always waking up because I'm fucking frequently tired. Are you frequently tired or are you just like... <laughs> bro, I'm tired all the fucking time. Nah. My sleep schedule is so bad because I don't work no more. Like, I just do music, so... That's what's up, man. I literally, like, all, uh, all my... Anytime I'm doing work or, like, writing and shit, it's just yeah. at night. So, I just sleep the whole day. It's bad. Fuck, dude. This is, I... like, my midnight right that's now. Not, that's not too terrible sleeping the whole day, but, I mean, you get to work at night, right? You get to do all the music. Do you... Okay, so I know that's... Let's, let's, let's get right into it. I know you have roommates, right? So do they ever get, like, annoyed with you doing your thing? or is it just... nah, nah, all my roommates are in HHM. They're all, like, they make music with me and shit. Okay, okay. So they're, like, fucking egging you on pretty much. So what is HHM? What's 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 going on with that? Uh, HHM. Oh, on the, on the nuts. Uh, it's just it's some family shit. Um, it started, like, as a music collective that I started because I wanted to do... Like, I've been in stuff that was, you know, just online and shit where everyone spread out a bunch. And I wanted something that was, like, local where we could just get in the studio and actually do shit together. Um, and it's just kind of grown into, like, a big-ass family. That's tight, man. So, like, how did – so who was, like, the first one that, like, you kind of met and you were like, hey, like, I'm going to get this shit started with, with like, you? Or who, um, like, who actually founded it and all that stuff? Uh, it was me. I mean, I founded it and shit, but it was – like in the OG days of me making music and stuff, I didn't really know too many people like in the music scene like that. So it was kind of just me and like my best friend who doesn't actually make music or nothing, but he's always like supported me and like invested in shit and helped me out. So uh, we kind of just one day I was like, dude, I need to, I need to do this. Like I want to make some shit. We're going to make it happen. And I went and tattooed it on my knuckles that day. <laughs> and I was like, fuck it, bro. Like, I I got to make some shit happen. Uh, and then the first, I think, artist that I, like, added to HHM was uh, my friend Jesse or Jay Matson. Okay. And we had played a bunch of house shows and shit together before, and we just fucked with each other's stuff. I think we had, like, one, maybe two songs together or something, but uh, we came together, and then he introduced me to Polar Opposites, who is two mags and Mako, and they were the next ones that joined. Um, and then it just started growing from there. Just People started snowballing. like flying and moving yeah. over to come come join the group and shit. It's crazy. So where did people fly to? Like, where are you, are you in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm on, I'm on the West Coast. I'm up in Portland. Oh, nice. Okay. So you had people fly to you, and you guys all live in like a like a house almost, like a, a hype house, if you will. Yeah, I mean, not all of us live in the house together. Oh, okay. uh, everyone, well, shit. Everyone's lived in this house at one point, okay. though, for sure. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> but yeah, no, we have. Uh, so like AK3K, uh -huh. he came. He came from PA. He flew out and wow. played a show with us. Um, and we were in another collective called Nephilim Gang together for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, and that, you know, that kind of died down and shit like that. And when he came out and, like, caught the energy of this and everything, he was like, bro, I need to make this happen. And I've always been very dead set on being like, you know, y'all can be family and shit to me. But if you don't live here, like, if, if we can't, like, see each other face to face, it, it's, it's just not going to happen right now. Right. So, uh, he came, Warlord Colossus, if you know him, I know you know him. Um, he came from Atlanta and flew down, and he lives here right now, too. So, people That's are coming, tight. dude. That's fucking tight, Crazy. man. So, does anyone own the house, or do you guys just rent it out, or what's... Uh, we're just renting it right now, yeah. Oh, cool. That's tight. That probably makes it a lot easier. I feel like owning the house would be a lot more stressful for whoever actually owns that shit. <laughs> be like, don't you fuck can. anything up! <laughs> See, yeah, not for real. Um... Yeah, no, we're just renting it right now. That's we just cool. signed another lease, so we're gonna be here for a minute. Oh, nice, very, very nice. Um, okay, so what is up with your with your name? What is that? What does that mean? Where'd you get that? My name. Uh, it's. I guess the short answer to that is it's like a timestamp of like a a really fucked up day and situation that I put myself in. Mm -hmm. Um, but don't know what it was but that day switched my mindset it's really it's really hard for me to like switch my mindset if i'm doing some fuck shit or if i'm like self-sabotaging or just like super depressed and shit like that like 
it's just hard. Um, so that day uh, I had overdosed and survived and I didn't come out of it being like, fuck, time to try again and kill myself or some shit. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was like a, bro, like I survived for a reason. I'm going to make this shit happen. I'm going to, I'm going to, just you know i'm gonna work to be happier rather than like work to just like numb myself and shit um and 40k was the number of plays i had across all platforms at the time uh and i was like from here like 40k up it's gonna be shit's gonna be different um and then witch house was just kind of like the name of the house that i was living at at the time where i was like brewing up some sketchy shit and that's what I that's what I overdosed on, you know. Okay, okay, but you don't do those drugs anymore. As someone could say, probably, right? You do not do no. those. Yeah, that's probably for the best, right? Yeah, I I keep it pretty. Now you chill have friends now. around I mean, you that are like able to, you know, condone positive behavior and just positivity in all aspects. I imagine. For sure, there's just I mean, there's other shit to focus on. And oh yeah. I'm definitely in like a, a much different place with my life and shit. You know, there's there's a lot more that makes me happy now than just like being fucked up yeah that's fucking awesome dude congratulations then um what got you into music um i don't really i mean i've been making music since i was like three like i've been playing Mm. drums and shit since i was three so i don't really remember that i just like i've I've always just connected with it (laughs) i don't know no I'm trying to get one though. We'll get one here soon. I just we just gotta find space for it or something. Right, they're very very big, especially like the bigger shell kits you get. You know, a lot of people can play on three shells, but I feel like that's kind of hard to do anything oh, dramatic. Dude. No, you gotta get the whole like Neil the whole six. wrapping around. Oh yeah, you. for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you have any favorite drummers at all, or is that kind of like a thing in the uh, past or? Um, I don't really have too many favorite drummers. Mm. I didn't. Yeah, it was it was when I was younger, yeah. so I didn't like look into the history of it too much i would just like play with bands and shit like that um but now i love that shit and i feel like drums translates directly to to rap and shit you know you're just doing beats for sure oh yeah 100 percent um so yeah i mean i've been making music for for long as fuck and i would say my music usually stems from me being sad or like pissed as fuck and feeling like i need to literally like I'm going to explode out of my body if I don't put some shit down or I'm going to go like fuck someone up or do some dumb ass shit. So back when I was young and I was in punk bands and shit, like that's what that was. But I think what started like, you know, rap or whatever you would call the shit that I made now is uh, I got my heart broken so hard when I was uh, like eight, 18, 19 or something. And yeah. heartbreak, heartbreak turns people into artists. It's a real good, good motivator right there for sure. That ass. Yeah, for real. Is there okay? So on the subject of heartbreak, is there any love in your life at the moment, or just kind of solo? No, solo yeah, I got a girlfriend. I oh, girl. nice. Is that is this the girl that's the first... featured in many videos, or is that a different a different girl? Yeah, no, nah, she's the one in Ragnarok and shit like oh, that. Oh, very, very she's cool. Dope. That is. How I long am... you guys been uh, been together? Um, like five months or so now. Nice, dude. That's but, awesome. Yeah, she cool. It's it's very hard for for me to want to be like tied down or relied relied on by anyone or anything like that so for sure she got she got to be pretty cool for that to happen for sure do you do you have any tips on like how to initiate that like who came up to who like how did that even start like what happened uh i hit her up we like knew each other through a mutual friend and Mm -hmm. i hit her up to be in that music video in ragnarok and shit like that um we just started hanging out from there dope that's awesome all right um what kind of setup do you use to record currently? Uh, I don't. So my laptop broke maybe about, I don't know, almost a year ago. And we all in HHM, like, pretty much have a studio. One of the members in HHM co-owns a studio. And so when my laptop broke, I just started going to him. So he, me and him just record all my shit. I don't know everything that he uh, uses. Okay. Yeah, um, no microphone wise like 7b always like i've used that since the beginning yeah. uh that shit is i love it sounds really good on my voice oh yeah in sure. my opinion um and yeah i don't know it's arguably one of the best like screamer or aggressive type uh microphones to use yeah i feel like it muddies my voice a little bit and like some people don't like that but 
I but like you it. like that. Yeah. Okay. That's mm-hmm. tight. Do you do you run a cloud lifter off of it, or do you know by any chance? Or nah, okay. uh, I don't. No worries. No worries. Do you have? Do you know what you did for your first setup ever? Your first song you ever recorded? What did you use? Oh hell yeah, yeah. Of course, I definitely went through the closet phase and like you know we're fucking doing it in your kitchen and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, I I started doing it I think on like Audacity and like a gaming microphone headset oh, or some shit. shit like that. <laughs> Like some OG, OG nice. Shit. Nah, like you sit, gotta make it fucking work. On my floor, yeah. <laughs> taking fat like tobacco weed bong rips and shit, just sad as fuck. Like making the worst music ever. <laughs> nah, man, it's it's all good fucking music for sure. But I definitely yeah, feel it's you my on life, that. you know. Um, I mean, on that subject, do you have any songs that you've ever made that you fucking hate? Oh hell yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Could you name yeah, like shit, two of them that you just dislike the most? um i mean there's ones for different reasons you know but oh, okay pretty much most of my music before like shit maybe like a year ago like baraka like yeah. the a song that's produced by my friend in like seven and shit like that that was like the the starting point of what i feel like i found my sound and like the stuff that i wanted to really make and it started like i could actually stomach listening to my own music and shit uh anything before that's pretty tough to listen to for sure mm-hmm. um some what's what's one in particular that i fucking hate <laughs> i don't know people are gonna hate hate me if i say i don't flinch i don't i don't hate i don't flinch i love the song yeah. but i feel like it's so hard to perform it like well uh, and i've had so many weird experiences trying to perform that song that that's just like the first thing that comes to my mind but I know everyone likes that song, so yeah. I was, I was, I was just gonna say it's it's funny you say I don't flinch because it it was your most popular song on all platforms, but it recently yeah, got taken down. Is. Yeah, well, it got taken down off trash. Yeah. Yeah. So what's up with that? Did or I know you're like you're close with them or something, right? Did were you able to talk with them or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So about that? that that's not their fault at all. Yeah. Um, the sample used in that is from. I mean, I thought it was from Back to the Hotel, uh, but it's it's from this, like, pretty much this old, like, 70s jazz band, the like, yeah. that sample was used from something else, so it's just gotten so big that they found out about it. Uh, I guess my, the producer didn't clear the sample, and they hit me up, and we're like, you know, let's figure something out. And so we are currently, like, getting all the paperwork signed and shit and clearing the sample and everything, getting it getting it all situated so yeah. it will be back up on trash very soon it's all it's it's up on like all other platforms well that's good shit, news so. to hear i'm sure yeah people definitely seem to love it it's also your most played on spotify and on the rhythm of spotify you have an inconceivable amount two hundred thousand plus people listening to you monthly which is just fucking insane um congratulations Crazy. on that what do you Crazy. think contributes to the growing popularity on that platform specifically is there any kind of formula or it just kind of just happens? Um, you know, I, I wish that I was paying more attention when it really started to like pick up. But for, I feel like for like the most crucial part of my Spotify growth, like in the beginning, you know, like I feel like it's really hard to go from zero to like 20K, right? Like yeah. that's, that's tough, but I feel like after 20K, right, like there's enough people listening that it's gonna slowly keep going up. I feel like, yeah. I don't even know what happened to 20K because I was still focused just on SoundCloud. Like I just put all my shit, I just put all my shit on all other platforms and stuff and just like let it do its thing. Like I had some old grainy like <laughs> profile picture. I didn't even, I didn't even know. Um, but I definitely would say that I don't flinch when it dropped on trash. It was early enough in like trashes history that it it just you know if you got a placement on trash basically it transferred over to all other platforms really really good yeah so i think that kind of kick-started it and then i just you know kept consistently dropping and shit on there uh i need to go in and like redo it and stuff like i know there's so much that you can do on on spotify now like you can yeah, like canvases any... now you can put yeah, some lyrics exactly. put some videos it's pretty insane sure. um but building um, on what you just said um, with how the, the history of trash, if you were there earlier, how do you think that compares to now with like people being posted? I don't, I, I personally don't really see too many, as much views as they had, even though now they have twice as many uh, subscribers. What do you think 
is happening sure. there? What, what's what's going on? Uh, I just it's, – it's pretty flooded now. I mean, it used to be, like, they would post pretty infrequently, and it was, like, a, a pretty select few artists. Um, it, it was just rarer to get a, a post from Trash now, um, and you had to be, like, relatively verified in some way or just yeah. have, like, a crazy-ass song to get on there. So I feel like with that, you know – there's that and then I also feel like the older you know when when channels like that are smaller and like even though the the subscriber base is smaller I feel like that OG like cult supporting fan base and shit they're the ones that are going to be most active and then when shit gets it's so big you know there's there's so many people that are just looking at it for for one thing it's not like a necessarily super super all three million subscribers are like dedicated like it was back when they had like 300k you know i do for sure for sure um how do you feel about people making edits for you in general not even on trash just on youtube do you enjoy that does it make you feel any sort of way or no nah, no nah, that's it. it's dope as fuck, fuck with it. i love that shit okay I, lo- I mean i love making like video edits and videos and stuff and i very much fuck with pretty much everything that like people will take my art and like make their own art with it mm. as long as they're not doing some dumb ass shit trying to make money or, or you know do any yeah. weird issues or nothing like go for it do it for sure do you have a favorite edit of yours uh, that you, comes to your mind or they're just all fucking fire um favorite edit of mine that's a good ass question um The only, like, the main one that I can think of right now is 40 Years of Rain. The one on Trash was super fire. But Notorious just dropped an edit to Ragnarok, and he used, like, God of War. That shit's crazy. Stuff. That shit's crazy. That's the first time I've had, like, an edit with, like, a, a video game. cinematic video game yeah. or some shit. Or, like... Yeah, I don't know. I want to I wanna start doing stuff with, like, video games or movies. No, nah, for was, sure. That was fucking tight. I just actually interviewed him, like, a month ago. And, yeah, his whole process is fucking insane. It's dope that he does, like, movies, like, cinematic shit, like you were just saying. Yeah, it's for real. I don't know insane. how he does that. No, nah, dead ass. I, don't, do I do shit, not but... have the time for none of that, for real. Nah, but uh, <laughs> it's cool, for real. It's fucking awesome. <clears throat> um, So, I saw you have a video. It's actually, it's your first Instagram post now. And we'll get to that later as well too. But I saw at one of your shows, you're you're telling the crowd, you'll fucking move, move, and then they bust the support beam in the middle of the <laughs> building. Talk to yeah. me about that. What the fuck happened after that happened? Uh that that actually wasn't me shouting that. It was Jay oh, Green. Oh, we okay. Were like, we were all uh it was that was actually the show that, that Shadow Fest, right? Started. Or something like that? No, no, no. That was that was way before. That's what started oh, okay. Hell Ha Militia. That was the one that me and Jesse played that afterwards. I was like, bro, let's let's do this shit. Um, but we opened up for Omen and Cold Blooded and Jay Green and like Roz Dilliams, I think. I, yo, I played that show here in Vegas. That's oh, yeah. so oh, funny. Yeah, dude. That's right. <laughs> that. that was awesome, dude. The uh Doubt Me Now too? Yeah, no, it was like a it was like a purple flyer. There was fire on it. Yeah, that shit was sick. Yeah, that was a good, um, good fucking tour. Yeah, they they busted the fuck out of the beam. So <laughs> the did whole, did like, anybody say anything? Did shit. the yeah like did the owners they were like fucking pissed or what happened? Yeah, for sure they were all coming downstairs and stuff trying to like originally they were like they were like everyone stand back from the floor. <laughs> and they like tried tried to make it so the show could keep going but obviously it just kept rebusting and they tried to like kick everyone out but we got probably another like twenty minutes <laughs> in before they could get anyone out. So like, the show the show ended twenty minutes after that. Oh yeah. Oh sure. my god, did did any of the headliners play or anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah what? it broke it broke like kinda during the openers and then that video busted with the headliners. So oh, was, okay. And then it was All just right. like busted for the red I think they busted another one too. Like, oh my god, I couldn't imagine being shit. the booking agent having to deal with that shit. Bro, it was just some dude some someone's house. Like it was someone's house. <laughs> oh my god, I'd be fucking mad. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any uh, crazy fan interactions that have happened over the years or any notable experiences, good or bad? Crazy? No, nah, I haven't met too many like no. in-person fans. I 
I'd say like the craziest shit to me that's happened is I was like walking around here and like someone noticed me in like a grocery store and I was like, what the fuck? Like, oh, that's cool. I don't even know how that happened. Uh, and then there's another like fan. I don't even, I don't like calling people fans, you know, but supporters. like yeah, yeah. supporter for sure. Who's like super fucking real. And he flew from Texas to just come to shadow fest for that night. Whoa. And, like, that was pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. That's yeah, tight yeah. as fuck. Well, tell me about Shadow Fest. How was that? It was, it was dope. It's fucking dope. It was good. That was like the, I think, third show that like all of us in HHM had thrown ourselves. But that was like yeah. the first, first real one where, you know, we had other artists flying to just come like perform and like. Oh, yeah. First like real, real one like that. No, that's super awesome, man. Um, do you have it? Do you have to put like? Do you put your own shows on, or do you go through like certain avenues within your own city, or what's what's going on with that? Uh, Portland's got a pretty small like family underground scene. Like yeah. everyone kind of knows each other. It's definitely getting bigger now, but like back in back in those days, for sure, it was pretty small. So we just yeah, we threw them ourselves or just. Uh, you know, people that were doing house shows or like little warehouse venue shows, they just knew us and if they fucked with us, they just hit us up and we'd go play. That's fucking tight, dude. Um, do you uh have any tips for people that want to plan their own shows or any kind of techniques that they should follow to get in with the promoter or even just the owner of the house or just ask? Um not really other than like i don't have much experience booking like professional venue shows where you yeah. have to work work through like a, well even like a house or anything stuff. yeah yeah houses that i say my best like the the thing that helped me the most was just like going and socializing not just for the you know not going and like hunting someone down to be like yo can we use your house like if you just hang around the scene and make friends with people like i promise that shit like opportunities like that will just start popping up like if you're going to house shows as like you know an audience member if you're like just meeting people and stuff and they see that you're making music and you're like serious about it i people will hit you up to play shows for sure hell yeah fuck yeah man um on in regards to music what kind do you listen to nowadays do you listen to anything like in particular or just whatever's popping or um it's pretty different now like ever since I like started really making music my job and shit like that, like I pretty much, I listen to music now to like study it a lot yeah. rather than a lot of enjoyment or, well, yeah. obviously I still enjoy listening, you know, that's not what I'm saying, but I think what I listen to just to like enjoy shit is, is pretty different than the stuff I make. Like I listen to a lot of like, uh, I listen to a lot of like, what do you even call it? Like, singy rap melodic rap type stuff like i fuck with polo g and like all of all of that whatever you call that just like the melodic rap shit yeah tight uh, i listen to a lot of like indian stuff like that too and then you said indian up, stuff <laughs> indie In okay indie, i like was like what is indian stuff no yeah i know what india <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I'm, i misheard you <laughs> no you're good that's um, awesome so yeah, do you listen to like, like what is it like uh that, that fucking law law dispute you listen to them or mm. no check them I out that is. they're I like bet. angry angry indie music angry that that sounds like perfect right up my alley i think you would like it for sure um do you have any hobbies outside of music or just music uh yeah i mean i i draw a lot of shit i used to rock climb before i busted my hand all up it's still healing um what else do I do? Oh, I skate a bunch. Fucking, I fight people. <laughs> uh, no, no I'm playing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's pretty, my life's pretty chill right now just because now that like music is the only thing I, I do and shit mm -hmm. like that, like I thought it would get, it would open up more time to, you know, find more hobbies and shit, but it really just makes you obsess about music 24 seven. So a mm -hmm. lot of other hobbies and interests and stuff kind of get, get pushed to the side 100 percent. tell me about your hand what you mentioned your hand is messed up what what happened oh uh, yeah i got uh in a fight and then punched a wall right after and oh. broke the shit out of my hand like maybe a year ago and it's it's still doing it's doing its thing healing oh my goodness did you go to the doc you got you went to the doctor right and did everything and still yeah, healing. I had to wear wow. i had to wear a little cast and shit for a while jeez man that's rough that sucks 
Have you broken any anything else in your body? And any other serious injuries or just that? <laughs> I broke my back when I was young. You broke your back? Yeah. Holy shit! What happened? Uh, I jumped off like a five-story building and landed on my feet and the, my like spine, one of the one of the vertebrae, like compressed over another one. And, oh like, pop my it out and, god! Like, heal it all up and shit. You don't walk funny or anything, do you? You walk like a nah, new... okay. I'm totally fine. Jeez, I'm like man. I'm only two feet tall now, but <laughs> that's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that's funny. Damn, well, we're happy that you're okay, that's for sure. Fuck, man. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the Bloodbender mixtape. I know you work with Medu, who I heavily fuck with. He's in my little collective. What's uh, what's the relationship there? How, what was the process of creating the uh, mixtape? What's your little collective? That's dope. Oh, it's uh, Caustic. Just Caustic Collective. We don't really... We're just kind of like in-house shit. Like, we're not really loud or anything. <laughs> not yet, yeah. at least. One day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Netsu is sick. I love him. He's... One of the most like talented and supportive producers out there right 100%. now. Fuck with him super super heavy. Um, and he's just been supplying me beats, and I mean we've been talking, making music and shit for a while now. I think I have like I think two mixtapes ago was like the first time we started like working, uh, and I just. I, I pretty much was like, bro, we need to we need to make a whole tape. Like, I owe it to you, and I feel like you'd want that from me. Let's make it happen, and we made it happen. Yeah, it sounds good. It came out nice. What's your favorite song off of there? Um, my favorite song is Bayonetta, probably, but Ragnarok is pretty special because I feel like I haven't made like nothing like that before, and it's very hard to try and like make something like that again so i i like that song too but yeah that song is very nice that one, song's one fucking two. dope it seems that people really like zika that's from the mixtape correct that's from bad strains yeah that's from the one it's about different oh, i'm stupid as fuck i'm thinking of the actual cover. they both got red covers and shit. yeah that's what i'm thinking of my bad oh bad strains so bad strains was was all produced by Klimongu. That's tight. And that one's definitely a different vibe, but that that's probably like the most fun I've had making music was that tape for sure. That tape in particular? The that strange strange, yeah, that shit was super easy to make, like no stress. I wasn't beating myself up to make it and it just like easily came out super fire and different and I was just, it was, it was a good time for sure. How, what is the process? So say someone sends you a beat, what, how long does it take you to know if you fuck with it or not? Uh, I mean, I can tell immediately. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. No, for pretty sure. Much, me too. Me, me too, for sure. Like, yeah, if, I, if I'm beat hunting or like going through beat packs that people send me, like, I swear, I can hear like two seconds of the sample. And if it's not what I'm looking for, like, I'll just, I'll go on. But I mean, I feel bad because there's a lot of times where I'll be super set on a beat and then I'll go record and I'll record on it and it just won't be up to par, you know, and I won't use it. So yeah. it's, it's a pretty, pretty long process, I guess. Like I'm either going to tell you within five minutes or I'm going to tell you like two days before it's supposed to drop. That's funny. So you'll have like songs completed and then be like, wait, I'm not going to drop that. Hell yes. Yeah. So oh, many, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I dropped probably like 20% of completed songs. No like, I just, way. I'll, yeah, for sure. Do you have like a throwaway account at all or? Do you just you just you just hide the beats in general, never to come out forever. Yeah, uh, I'll like take the best part of the or like the verse or the song in it a lot, and I'll yeah. like stitch it into other songs that I actually end up using. So I like recycle the stuff that doesn't get used sometimes. But yeah, there's a lot of unheard shit for sure. Well, damn, I'm sure people would pay to fucking hear those. Um, thousand dollars an unreleased song. Let's get it. <laughs> I think I think there was an artist that did do that, and then that guy Martin Shkreli. Oh, it was Wu, Wu Tang. They sold oh, that yeah. they sold that album for a million, and now he has that album, and he doesn't release it. It's so it's funny, wild. Man. It's fucking wild. Um, yeah, so, yeah. um, let's go back to the whole Spotify thing. So you have two hundred thousand listeners. I, you you probably have a ton of followers on there as well, but when you look at things like your Twitter. Or like your Instagram, there's they're not even incomparable. Num they're not comparable numbers mm -hmm. whatsoever. As a yeah, matter of sure. fact, the Twitter is is the least interacted of of all of them. So yeah, what I think is? I got like fucking 
maybe a thousand followers on Twitter, maybe. Now you have like I think nine eighty or something. I don't remember yeah. the actual, but what what do you th what's what do you think is going on there? What's the correlation of getting everyone on everything? Uh, shit, bro. I don't I don't really know honestly. Um, it's Instagram and like social media has been a whole fucking game in itself. Like I'm not I'm not one to go out and do a whole bunch of like I, I put in work and stuff you know I put in work to my socials and trying to like make you know make it look good and like put out good content and shit like that but I'm not gonna go play the follow unfollow game or put a whole bunch of time into it just because I've never fucked with social media ever like mm -hmm. not in high school none of that shit so I don't want to just sit there all day and play the game um and that's the same with Twitter that's the same with you know all of that shit so that's all just been a very slow gradual growth of, of stuff like that twitter is like the smallest just because i fucking i didn't even start using twitter until like five months ago probably and the only shit i really post is like if i'm dropping a song i'll throw the link down there that's it like i'm i'm not gonna go share my feelings i i totally respect anyone that is and shit like that it's just it's not for me um instagram's fun for me because as as a visual artist too like as someone that loves taking pictures and someone that loves drawing and shit like i can play around with the stuff that i post on there but socials are just are tough so it's just you know it's been a slow incline of that kind of shit i'm fucking hyped to hit 10k on instagram though because then i can get that swipe up feature and shit i thought that was at 5k i think it's that is it i have it yeah what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know how to fucking use it at all, like literally at all. But yeah, I think I you get it at five k. Check your oh, check shit. your uh, settings again or something like that. I'm pretty sure you have it. All right, bet that'd be dope. Fuck yeah, um, dude, that'll help you a lot. People just shoop, swipe up and then go directly there. <laughs> For real. Oh yeah, man, that's tight. Um, yeah, and I mean Spotify is just. I feel like if you get the right situation to happen, it can just explode really fast compared to. I haven't figured out how to get that you know like if you get put in a playlist on spotify that shit can boost you like 10 Crazy. times more than just yeah. you know all my followers on my my socials combined whereas like instagram i don't i don't know who to do that shit with and i don't really care you know right do you have any certain spotify playlists that you fuck with that like post you or just all of them oh yeah for type? sure um i still don't really know like too much about how that all works and I really need to learn because Spotify is obviously like the, the best way. platform. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's the future. <laughs> um, You're I'm out really... of focus right now. Oh, shit. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I fuck with Scream Rap Heavy, super supportive. And he, he'd, be, he'd be posting all the goats of the underground for sure and showing mad love. Um, I'm sorry, I'm bad at replying and Ty you are Ray, bad at replying <laughs> bro i'm the worst this interview is like the rarest shit ever like <laughs> it was very I, hard I, it was very hard i don't to talk to nobody together. i don't talk to even like my homies will have to fucking come bang on my door if they want to want, want that's anything. so funny uh, um but yeah tirades always fuck with me and they they've boosted me up for sure um they've had a couple of songs in their playlist for a while um i think is it called internet people i don't it's know like a, if i'm familiar with them it's there was some really big i'm pretty sure that's what it was called and there that was the biggest playlist that i've been put in uh, and that's Fuck yeah that's really the only time that i've actually seen a shit ton of growth like like what a spotify, spotify playlist can do for real i for think real. that i think that boosted me up probably like forty thousand monthly listeners like wow in, in like a week and That's then it, I think, uh, and then they dropped it, or they dropped the songs after like a month from the playlist, and the uh, like I went down a little bit, and I thought I was gonna lose all of the ones that had come from that playlist, but it went down maybe like five k, and then just started, started going back, going up, back up. Damn, that's tight, man. That's super sick. Um, do you uh, are you able to talk about who your favorite Hellhound Militia member is? <laughs> who my favorite hell my favorite one is. yeah i don't know if i've like thought about it like that no one's like i mean they're all different for sure um but yeah you don't have to answer that either what's your relationship with warlord colossus um 
family. I mean, he yeah. he's the newest member of of HHM, and oh, he's also yeah. the newest one to move here. Mm. But straight family, super super fucking talented dude. He he's a big reason that I like started really pushing music heavy and taking it serious in the OG days. Because before Hell Hell Militia, you know Nephilim Gang, what I was yeah. talking about before, that was his group, and that was like the first real group of artists that i really fucked with that also showed love back um and he's he's just a hella talented dude it's it's super cool having him in the group and it's great living with him and shit like i wake up and hear this man working and i'm like fuck bro i gotta eat a banana and i'm gonna go do the same thing you know definitely (laughs) um you they okay so warlord and ak3k they play a lot of video games and i'm kind of surprised that i don't ever see you playing any video games do you have no interest in stuff like that uh i got a really short attention span for anything other than like music or drawing yeah and so like tv shows and movies and like video games and stuff just in the back of your mind nothing really it's hard for me to like do it for more than probably literally like a half hour at max and shit so i just i've never really like bought you know games or nothing like that but i mean if anyone wants the wants the smoke in super smash bros i'm here for it who do you main uh usually i'll main falco but i've been trying to run up chic lately because chic is is both very very fast characters yeah for sure that's tight yeah Falco, Falco, that boy. I'll fucking end you with Samus. Oh, let's go, bro. Let's go. <laughs> um, talk to me about Fiddler, man. It's your first song you uploaded to your personal YouTube. Oh, my God. And it God. seems to be the first song you uploaded anywhere. I know you said earlier you don't like the songs that are, you know, passed from a year ago. That's definitely from, I believe, 2018. So what's yeah. up with that? What's up with that song? How did that come about? Um, Shit. I forgot about that song, low key. That that was like the first. That's not the first song I ever made or nothing. Yeah. Um, I think there was even a few more songs that were like on my SoundCloud and shit before that, but they're on private now. Um, that was like the first song that I bought a beat to, mm. and actually, mm, somewhat mixed and mastered, and it wasn't just like raw vocals and shit like that. It was it was it was kind of the first like. Thing I was okay putting out. Yeah, you know, I didn't listen to it, and I wasn't like, "This the next hit," you know. But you were just happy fun. with making it. Yeah, I um, feel you. Shit, I haven't listened to that in forever, but no, that definitely that song was the start of of pretty much all of it. Honestly, bet. Um, let's go back to Zika. It's a very different kind of bouncy club vibe. What made you make something like that? uh i i make (laughs) shit i don't know i feel like the two types of music that i've really been inspired by is like that kind of shit where it's like the you know kind of the not distorted but like the gritty but still like bouncy shit like a lot of what's posted on dark tones a lot of that i don't even know what you would call that you know just like that new school underground shit i listen to that uh whole bunch i love that shit and then also obviously i make like weird dark shadow rap stuff too um and i felt like almost like i was kind of locked in this box of i had to keep making that same like kind of dark shadow rap uh and i wanted to break out of it because i i pretty much been making a bunch of songs like one song at a time that had like that a different vibe or it was like you know more bouncy and shit and then i just wouldn't drop it because i was like this would just wouldn't make sense to drop right now uh in in the timeline of what i've been dropping and stuff and i was like fuck that shit i'm just gonna blend my two styles and i'm gonna put out a tape like it's happening and that it was super fun to do oh yeah man well it came out nice so i mean no one can argue that um what do you feel is i know you say you don't fuck with social media but what do you feel is the most important platform like everything gets terminated and you can only pick one platform for your music to exist on what is it <laughs> uh shit i mean if money wasn't involved i'd say youtube because i love videos and i love edits and see like seeing something to a song is important to me yeah um but i mean 
right now, like if, if, in real world shit, I would definitely say Spotify for sure. Uh, Spotify pays me really good. And 100%. probably the majority of what most artists are making, like they're streaming money off of is Spotify. So yep. that's their like, you know, I'm getting a check that can pay my bills. So hell yeah, man. Um, Let's say 30K is given to you tomorrow. You have one week to spend it. What are you, what are you, what are you getting? What's, what's the, what, what are the steps to spend this money? <laughs> uh, definitely going to invest it in the music. I'll probably, I'll probably like try and just bust out like four videos or some shit like that. I probably, shit, what else do I need? I get my throat tattooed. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't buy myself too many things or like i don't have a lot that i i'm hoping to buy anymore other than just expensive ass stuff for music you yeah. know like equipment or just videos promotion all of that shit yeah uh there's definitely random days i'll wake up and i'll be like damn i want some balenciaga today and i'll <laughs> mm -hmm. and i'll make that shit happen so it'd probably be a lot of tattoos probably be a lot of music some maybe, maybe like a party night or two and, okay uh, say the rest nice nice okay talk to me about your fashion because you mentioned balenciagas i see you wearing mad is i think it's mad i don't know how to say it properly you got the yeah, adidas nice. mask on you have a lot of you have a lot of fashion going on tell me about what your aesthetic is how do you do you plan your outfits or anything do you have like a certain website you like to go to uh yeah i mean I don't know what I would call my like style or nothing personally. I've had a lot of people say it's like tech wear or just, I mean, I don't feel like I'm like techie. I don't have all the tech shit on, but I guess, I guess I could see where that's coming from. Um, do I plan my outfits? Yes. A lot less now because I've kind of just, I fuck with most of the clothes that I have, so it's kind of like if I throw something on, I'm I'm usually all right with it, and it's a lot of it's a lot of black, so <laughs> it's not that hard. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I really fuck with military style, like um, straps and carabiners and fucking random pockets and and all that shit. And then I fuck with like super heavy punk style too, like cut and sew and patches and mm -hmm. all of that shit you know and like crust pants all of that all of that so i don't know my style is kind of just a blend of that shit and then just yeah all right any, any any like military surplus store that has a bunch of like random weird military shit though like you're I going will, shopping i will spend a bag every yeah. time <laughs> i bet but <laughs> do you have any interest in being in the military or have you been in the military before or you just uh, I I used to want to be in the military when I was like younger and shit because mm. I fucking hated my parents and I was oh. like I, I just thought they looked super I mean I thought they just seemed like a solid escape that seemed like cool at the mm. time too and shit so I definitely went through like wanting to be in the military for a while and then when I kind of got to the age of like I don't know maybe like sophomore year in high school or some shit I uh, kind of realized I didn't I didn't like being told what to do and that's that's the military it. right there that's that's pretty yeah. much the military so I uh, figured it probably probably wasn't the right move for me heard um I want to circle back to like the music itself do you or actually pause how do you feel when people label your music a certain genre like if you're called um like shadow rap or death rap or not or horror core or whatever else kind of label do you get any kind of way about that do you do you care do you not care uh no i don't care i mean i don't really even know what to like call myself a lot of the time so i kind of use that to see how people are taking my music or you know when people ask me what kind of music and shit that what makes do you what do you tell them when people ask what kind of music you make I used to say punk rap a lot and I don't think that's a hundred percent accurate anymore. I say, I say shadow rap a lot now shadow or rap. just like under like new school underground shit. Depend oh, yeah. Nice. It's, it's tough. Yeah. I don't really care if people like put a label on it or anything though. I mean, you know, I feel like every artist is going to get the, like, you sound like this person, you're jacking this person. Oh yeah, for sure. And like, that's a whole different thing, but 
like yeah i mean you have to love those know, videos when it's artist gotta... versus artist and like the whole comments are like <laughs> fuck that other artist no fuck your other artist it's like you could like both of them it's all good <laughs> that ass not for real uh, people are people are wild um let's do some quick questions and then i see you chat we're gonna get you guys in about five minutes i'm gonna ask him a couple more we didn't get to every question I have. I definitely have a fucking grip left for you. Um, but let's get some quick ones. Um, what's your favorite okay. favorite, favorite kids movie? Ooh, favorite kids movie. Right now, Shark Tales. Because I just watched that off the shits and it was so fucking good. Ah, okay, okay. Um, you have a favorite streaming service? Streaming, like music-wise? Um, that or and like, like well, you don't really watch videos. TV or, or shows like that. You you had said so. I imagine you don't. Really it was them. Netflix until they took like five of my favorite shows off that shit. So I've been watching a lot of Hulu or Mandalorian on Mandalorian. Disney Plus because my girl is like forcing me to watch shows. Should I should I check that out? Cause like I've been on the edge. Cause I like I got a Star Wars tattoo, but the last three the last three Star Wars films for me were shitty. So I haven't really touched anything Star Wars. Oh yeah, no, it's it's definitely better than those. It, it's very different. Like it's almost like a fucking like old western bounty hunter movie, just like set in the Star Wars universe. It's it's dope as shit. That is cool. Do you have any favorite tattoos of yours? Favorite tattoos of mine? Oh shit. Uh, probably this one right here. Ugh. Okay. What could could it's you describe a, what it is? Yeah, tell me tell us what it is. Yeah, that was that was like the first one I ever got and I basically me and my artist drew up my favorite little piece of like every uh oh yeah, we can focus. It's like my one little piece of everywhere that I lived as a kid. Uh and like we basically blended it all into one house type of image and shit and it's important to me because there was a lot that I did not, there was a lot of fuck shit that happened. So like taking all of the best little, little things that I can like, you know, remember as a positive memory from that shit was, it makes me happy to see most of my tattoos represent like fuck shit that happened. Not, not in a bad way. It's just like something that I can get over, you know, or like a, a way to get over it or a way to like cope with it or something like that. Yeah. So the few on me that represent really like good things or happy times are, are pretty special to me for sure. That's cool, man. So you don't get it. It's, it's safe to say you don't get a tattoo just for the fuck of it. Uh, I mean, I have, you have. Sure, but <laughs> show us, show us one of those. <laughs> oh, let's see. Take my shoe off real quick. <laughs> it's like the worst fucking tattoo ever, but I did this on myself. <laughs> You can't even see No, it. we can't. We just see your foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, there's like a, the big dipper. Cause when I was young as shit, I got the big dipper on me, but it's, it's all fucked up. Like the, it's missing like certain areas and lines and shit. It's really bad. That's, uh, uh, that's unfortunate, but it's a good memory. I, I, I bet. Would, would you ever get it redone? Touched I don't up? think I have any, I don't actually think I do have too many that don't have meaning, honestly. That's cool, man. Would I get it touched up? Fuck no, I would get it covered though. Oh, just straight up covered, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell me what is 747? 747, the, I mean, easy way to describe that, they're my angel numbers. So if anyone knows what angel numbers are, they're basically ways for energy and spirits to uh, communicate with you, I guess, in a way that's, guiding you along your path so 747 to me means basically you're doing the right thing you're on the right path focus on what you're doing right now and like everything will be okay um and so if you notice that you see a lot of number patterns like all the time you should look it up and see what that shit means because it's it, it, it means something. I mean, whether whether it's real or not, like it's it's good, healthy reminders, you know. So, yeah. Heard. Tell us about your bike. Like my motorcycle. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a 2004 CBR 600 Double R. I Ooh. love it very much. <laughs> love it when you talk dirty. I've had bikes since, since yeah. <laughs> I've had bikes and shit since I was like 16. I've never owned a car or nothing, so. That's awesome, man. Have you ever gotten any tickets? Yeah, no way. Anything crazy like that? Yeah, I went through a 
a stunt, little stunt phase there for a little bit. And I got a couple tickets for that. I might have gotten like a speeding ticket or something once or some shit, but it, n nothing crazy. What's the fastest you've been? I think I've been like one, probably like 130, 120, 130 or something over a bridge from Oregon to Washington. It's just like this straight bridge the over straight the water. Thing. There, was, there was no one on the bridge in like the just random time of the day. And I was like, <laughs> rocking You're like, I'm doing this shit. That's cool. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Um, do you own any weapons? I do, yeah, for sure. Do you feel free to talk about that or no? I mean, yeah. What do you have? Uh, I have a Glock 45. I have a Walther something. And I think that's all that I have right now. You go out shooting often or is it just a, just a, like not, a home not defense so much. thing? Not, I don't go out shooting much right now just because it's so gross outside and like all the indoor shit is shut down because of COVID and stuff. But yeah. over the summer and stuff, yeah, like me and the, you know, the whole gang and shit. And like I have a couple other friends from, from back in the day and stuff that they've gotten some guns and shit too. And there's there's plenty of places to go shooting around here and stuff. There's there's like mountains and shit really close and there's like designated just free outdoor places you can go and just like shoot shit. So That's cool. Yeah, that's really fucking cool. So I saw I got and like fucking I got like swords and a bunch of medieval ass shit too. <laughs> yeah. Would you have a favorite kind of medieval item that you have or a sword that you have? You have the katanas or? Uh, I got I just got like this replica sword of the, uh, shit, bro. I'm forgetting the name of it. And I just watched this movie literally two nights ago. Um, whatever the sword in Lord of the Rings that was broken, I just got a replica of that. Oh, that's cool. And it's fire. No, that is fucking fire. Um, I saw that you have your nails painted sometimes. Is that is that correct? Yeah, they're pretty pretty ratchet right now. That's okay. Yeah. That, that, that's okay. What made you start doing that? And when you do that, do you get any criticism at all? And if so, how do you deal with that? Uh, what's oh man? It kind of just came from my punk days, honestly. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact reason. I think I just thought it looked cool and I've just been doing it for a minute. I used to just do like straight, just black on him or like I would just Sharpie it in. <laughs> oh, and, wow. Yeah. Um, and then now, now I get like actual shit painted on him by my girl because she, she does like really crazy fucking nail art. And so she'll just be like, well, that's useful. Let me, do, let, let me do something crazy. Let me put some like black widows on your fingers. Oh, that's like, hard. Run it up. No, that's super cool. Um, I mean, no, I don't. I don't really get no criticism or, or anything like that. I mean, especially out like where I live in yeah. Portland. They're very, very, very progressive, normal. very accepting super over there. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. That's super cool, man. Um, I okay, we're gonna. I promise. I I know I'm going over time, guys. I do apologize. Um, but I really, I just, I like all these questions that we got. Um, I saw that you ritually delete your posts on Instagram, correct? Yeah. Why? Uh, I just like the look of, I feel like my attention span is short and I feel like everyone else's attention span is short. So like less is better. A lot of the time, I feel like if, if I can keep it to like you having to scroll down just that much, the better chance you'll actually look at shit rather than if you're like having to scroll through a million things. Um, yeah. It, it used to be super hard for me to like actually purge photos and stuff like that. And you know, just needs to be done sometimes. I hear you. Um, do you watch porn? Do I watch porn? Not anymore because I got a girl. I'm chilling, but I, yeah. Do you have any favorite categories? Favorite categories of <laughs> porn? Shit. Uh, you don't have to answer either if you don't. Ritualistic. <laughs> fucking. <not. laughs> What's the most witch? They have witch to be porn? covered in blood. Or I'm not. Be <laughs> I'm like not about it. Levitating behind you and shit like that, like doing this stuff behind them. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny as fuck. Um. Okay. What type of food do you like? What's your favorite kind of food? Oh man. Um. I like. I don't really eat like big meals like that. I kind of just like eat small things throughout the day but i would say you can always count on me like fucking with mac and cheese if it's got broccoli and chicken in it like always broccoli and chicken mac and cheese that can be some like craft mac and cheese and if you throw some broccoli and chicken in it 
Fuck with okay, it. Okay, hundred dollars for it. Fuck, so <laughs> Fuck with it, man. Awesome. <laughs> um, do you prefer baths or showers? Showers. Do you have any favorite anime? Uh, yeah. I don't really, you know, surprise. Like, I don't really watch anime that much. I read. I like read the manga a bunch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say. I mean, Death Note, of course, Attack on Titan in terms of, like, anime. Those are the two that I've been able to, like, sit down and watch through. Tokyo Ghoul is really cool. I got a, got a Tokyo Ghoul tattoo. Um, fucking Helsing is really cool. I like weird, like, just, like, story ones, too. Like, not even, like, action and shit. Like, there's this one called Baku Gun? Baku Mon? Something like that, where it's, like, literally... Baku Gun? Like, the one where they like send out the little balls and they're not, like monsters. Not that one. Uh, That's Baku Gon. So it's Baku Mon, and, and Baku it's Mon. it's literally about two kids that like just draw basically and like just the bullshit they get in. So that's super good. Initial D super fucking good. I fuck with cars and stuff. Heavy, yeah. So. Well, that's dope. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Shit. Hopefully. Honestly, hopefully in the same position I'm in right now, like I feel like I'm pretty, I'm finally at a, at a point where like I've never wanted, you know, I've never needed like fame or, or any of fortune or anything like that. I just wanted to be able to not have to do the shit that I didn't want to do and just focus on doing the stuff I did and be able to make money from it and like be able to support myself. And like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm surrounded by people that, you know, I love and that support me back and shit. So if I'm in the same position that I'm in right now in five years, I'll be, I'll be stoked. Fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I, I hope you're in the, the way better position. I hope you're doing 2 million fucking. I mean, listeners. yeah, that'd be cool too. That'd be sick. Um, chat, if you have anything you want to ask, now is the time. I'll ask whatever you guys put down in this little chat area. Um, you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs, because I'm allergic to cats. Oh, that sucks. Xbox or PlayStation? Uh, shit, PlayStation. Do you believe in ghosts? Hell yeah. Shut the fuck up, Peach. <laughs> Hell yeah. Have you ever had any ex experience? Yeah, I've had some, yeah, I've had some weird experiences. I don't fuck with mirrors, like, at all, so. I hear you. I Have you seen the movie Mirrors starring Keith or Sutherland? No, but I've seen Oculus. That's a scary motherfucking movie. Mirrors <laughs> actually scared me from mirrors, like, no joke. <laughs> nah, I haven't seen it, but I would, nah. Um, Gay Panic asks, are you afraid of spiders? Am I afraid of spiders? Uh, not like normal spiders and shit. I do not fuck with tarantulas. Like I used Ooh. to, I used to have a girl that had a tarantula and she would like literally let it just sleep in her mouth. Mm. That's weird. Nah. Yeah. Fuck that. Was she, was she, was she white? That makes sense. Um, what's your opinion on ancient aliens? On ancient eight, like the the show or like yeah, Crone Fenrir asks, "What is your opinion on eight? maybe the show?" Uh, he doesn't really. I don't know if I've seen much of the show, but uh, I mean, I don't I don't really know. I don't really know what I think about aliens and shit. I definitely believe there's something out there, but I don't I don't believe it's like you know little like people looking things or like whatever yeah. that would come down and like help humanity build their shit up. Honestly, um, so I don't know. They'd probably kill all of us. If they ever showed up, that's probably, my probably opinion. Like some yeah. like tentacle rhino thing that would like <laughs> just be swimming through the water, levitating and shit. Like it's probably some super weird ass thing that isn't isn't nothing that we're thinking of. We, we, we probably couldn't even conceive what they are because they're such on a different plane of existence. For real, um, in the fourth dimension. Suicide God asks, "What would you do if the world ended tomorrow?" He'd probably die with the world, but yeah. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I would either die or, I mean, if we're talking, like, some ap apocalypse shit, some post-apocalypse shit, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I would thrive for, like, a solid two months, <laughs> and then I would probably just, I don't know, I'd probably, I'd probably just not make it after that. I hear you, man. Yeah, or, I mean, it, it all depends I mean, on how the world ends, really, right? I mean... For real. You don't know. I could become, like, the new king of the of the post-apocalyptic world, chilling up there, throwing big shows for everyone. Now, if the, if the Earth breaks apart, there's really... That that's really the end. There's nothing. Oh yeah, you can really do at that hard. point. <laughs> like I'm out. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely all out. <laughs> I'm jumping um, in a volcano. Clear or Sigurd or Jernick asks, how long did it take to grow your hair? To grow my hair, my hair is hella long. For those that don't know, it's probably like fucking here or so. 
Uh, I've had long hair since I was in high school, so uh, I mean, I've probably been growing it for like five years or something like that. Wow. But I've cut it for sure. It's yeah, been, definitely. You got to keep the ends nice, you know? You don't end yeah. up like this. You look dumb. <laughs> uh. Bro, my shit's fucked up too because I, I bleached the ends a bunch, so it's pretty, uh, that pretty makes, gnarly right that now. That makes sense, actually. Um, Barbara says, yo, bro, we love you so much. Um, yo, bro, I love you too. Crone Fenrir asked, do you watch Ghost Adventures? I have watched Ghost Adventures. That shit was sick as fuck. I used to watch that when I was young, yeah. Heard. Abby asked, would he say Bloody Mary three times in front of a mirror at midnight? No. Fuck that. Her. I would say I would say Bloody Mary, like anywhere else, or like you can you can just you can be by the mirror and you can Facetime me and I'll say it and see what happens to you. Ah! <laughs> Dude, what if it comes through the phone? You're fucked. Fuck no. So just fucked. lock the phone real quick. Just lock it. All right. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, <laughs> Hazy asks, how would an artist apply to be an HHM? Also, what's the best thing you think a fan can do to support you and the current scene that's coming from this music? Shit, that's a that's a good ass. I fuck with that. Um, to be an HHM, we just all gotta fuck with you, and you gotta be in Portland, basically. I mean, there's there's kind of different levels to it now too. Like, it's not just like a, a small little music collective. Like, there's plenty of people that you know I would consider HHM. I consider gang, but they're not even artists like that. So. As long as we all fuck with you and get along and it's it seems like some you know some family shit because that's really what it is like if, if that's the vibe that's being taught like come be part of the gang um i feel you and what was the other oh yeah how can you how can you support me shit mm. just i mean keep playing my music show show people and just i don't i don't really know i mean i would say just play that shit up comment on things comments are important get in the algorithm <laughs> a little bit Bro, the algorithms on all those platforms are, yeah. are just like comment heavy i swear so um abby I, well, i'll only take up like eight minutes more of your time i, I know it's kind of running a little oh, bit long yeah, um abby good. asks what is the thing that you are scared of something i'm scared of other than mirrors shit uh i don't fuck with open bodies of water at all. yo me either I love yeah. scuba diving, which is like oxymoronic because I, I literally just said that. But <laughs> fuck open water, dude. No. I hate open water. I literally, I went to Hawaii and I like, uh, I was with some homies and we were um, snorkeling or whatever, like, yeah. whatever it was. We like just, we jumped off the boat. I was young. I was probably like 14 or 13 or some shit, but we jumped off the boat and uh, I dead ass freaked out and just swam all the way to shore. <laughs> really wow like, no, bro. i like looked down and couldn't see like 10 feet and i was like yeah nah, you're like no, i'm not nah. about that no nah, that's that's for fucking facts um joao lucas asked hey you witch love your music would you make a feature with lil darky yeah that'd be sick bro darky's crazy as fuck i mean we don't i don't think we've even like talked or know each other like that or nothing but do you guys follow e each other uh I don't i think i follow him i don't know if he follows me though but he's he's crazy bro he's he is crazy. i very much respect like artists doing something different but in like a very good quality way like there's there's plenty of people trying to just do weird different shit you know but yeah. when people do it in a very just like they're taking it serious and they're doing it in a like really just high quality type way like i, I got a lot of respect for that and i feel like he him and like that whole little group like all of them are just doing like spider, spider games just going on different shit yeah, yeah it's crazy um sky asks do you have any shows in april i don't got no shows planned right now just because of covid i mean yeah a lot of a lot of shows got canceled and then here in portland like i don't know how our tour got canceled else. our tour yeah we were gonna go on a tour which still might happen here we'll see how this whole fucking pandemic world oh, yeah. ending happens but no nah, i don't got nothing for for the foreseeable future until things start opening up again i got you um, Crone Fenrir asked, do you have any pets or your opinions on ghosts? <laughs> Those are so different. Do you have any pets? Do I have any pets? Yeah. Uh, no, not currently. Not in this house. I and mean, my, my, I got like family pets and shit. But oh, nice. Living. Dogs, obviously, because you're allergic to cats. Yeah, I got a dog gotcha. and, uh, well, my mom's got a cat, but I hate that fucking, fuck that cat. Fuck that cat. Heard. And then what are your opinions on Ghostman? On Ghostman? Ghostman's sick. I mean... 
I don't listen to him that much anymore. It's been a while, but yeah. I don't I don't listen to a lot of like big big artists like that. And I feel like he's really reached a, a pretty big peak. Um, yeah. And I also, I mean, I definitely went through my like super heavy metal time and scene and shit like that. I'm just haven't been in it for the last while and shit and i feel like he's making pretty heavy music lately so it just hasn't really though it's kind fully. of like it's dope I'm, as fuck it's just I yeah mean, i'm not gonna be just sitting and listening to it right now but i fuck with ghost man a lot a lot of people compare me to ghost man and shit which i mean that's i'm fine with that i think he's super fucking talented and he makes you know pretty similar to the kind of energy and like aesthetic of just dark shit that hopefully you're yeah. thinking of when you're listening to my music like he he does the same thing so i hear you um suicide god asks you have any advice for music artists that are just starting uh my biggest advice is just try not to take like no shortcuts from the beginning or as soon as you can i mean i know like obviously at, at what i mean by that is like invest in actually purchasing a beat like actually take the time and make a song that you're gonna think you're gonna be happy listening to three years down the line because you can definitely do that shit and obviously it's gonna take work to like start getting stuff you're happy with and stuff but if you if you actually put like full energy into it and don't just cut corners because you're like oh i'm just doing this for fun or whatever like that like i promise it'll pay off in the future because it's like you just take shit serious from the, from as soon as you can, you'll you'll For start sure. popping. I promise. Um, Gay picnic asks, "What do you think about Satanism and the occult and stuff like that?" Satanism and the occult. Uh, I don't know too much about Satanism, but uh, I mean, here in Portland, there's a huge, like a super big Wicca and witch community. Like, not like a community of people. It's just like very panic. part of I'm the sorry. culture here i'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry which i'm sorry panic i did not mean to call you picnic my bad i have bad vision. <laughs> damn fucking bro. they're fucking screaming at me like bro. they're screaming at me dude Sick. i'm sorry um yeah i don't but know i mean I've, that's I've interesting to hear i've i've uh i went and had a little time in my life where i was you know fucking with kind of i don't even know if you call it dark magic or nothing like that but there's definitely i believe in energy i believe in a lot of the beliefs that come with being wicca or come with like voodoo and stuff like that uh voodoo is just a lot darker than wicca wicca is like doing stuff to benefit yourself that benefits others whereas voodoo is doing stuff that benefits you but takes away from someone or something else so i don't know man just be careful with that shit it's I believe it's real. I've seen very, very physical in front of my eyes proof of like crazy shit happening and stuff. Um, and it's That's definitely, wild. it's definitely all over here in Portland and Oregon and shit. Well, I got only two more for you, and I'll I'll let you go on your on your way, sir. Do you have uh, Death by Pancakes? Asked, do you have any plans on new merch? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I was gonna try and do a drop on Halloween for something, but. I'm still trying to like get everything. The last, the only merch I've dropped is some hoodies and which are uh, wild, like, by the way. I appreciate it. Oh, um, yeah. I'm still trying to like catch up and figure all of that shit out because there's like some of the internationals didn't show up, so I'm I'm trying to catch up on that and then I'll start working on some more shit. Heard. And then God a ban X. What's your opinion about Project? Like the artist? Yes. Uh, I haven't listened to him really that much i've heard a couple songs though and they're fire as fuck uh, i know he's made a big impact in the scene and shit and i fuck with his whole like style and everything like obviously i very much like masks and covering my face and he does the same um i think he's one of the dopest in the game right now in terms of like the art that he gets or the art that he like uses and commissions and stuff like him and seven and shit like that like both of them just use super consistently like crazy art of themselves i fuck with it oh yeah baker i don't i don't i don't know what you asked so i can't i can't ask which but i mean that's the last question anyways but which house this was awesome man i appreciate you being on here do you have anything yeah. you want to tell these peeps or anything you have to you have to say i mean no not really i mean i appreciate you you have me on here and shit like that it's 
not often that I, I feel like I want to talk to someone or like feel comfortable enough to do that shit. So you're definitely one of the rare people. Well, thanks for trusting me with that, man. I appreciate that for real. Bro, yeah, for sure. I fuck with you heavy. And uh, I mean, I oh, yeah. And we got a song there. coming out. We got a song coming out. Sinister. I mean, I don't want to yeah. fuck anything up. I, I But I heard. Uh, fuck. Just everyone erased what I just said. But I heard that someone else is hopping on a track with us, which is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah me you and sinister okay cool uh, i don't know if you want me to say it or not but yeah that'll be fucking it is crazy it's produced by plague Brian spencer and plague oh blind um, oh, okay cool uh, yeah only did his part i need to finish mixing it and get my part laid down and i'll get sinister's part back we'll put it put it together but oh, yeah that song we gotta get that energy. we gotta get that great that energy. fucking christmas re release <laughs> let's get it i'll be down as fuck <laughs> All right, man. Well, again, thank you so much. Everyone check out uh, Witch House on all the socials. Wh yeah, the baby's here for sure. She's playing with the dog. I'm sorry. Witch House 40K. Check him out. Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever you listen to, he's there. And again, thanks yep. so much, man. This was a lot, of, a lot of fun. Hell yeah, man. Appreciate it. You have a wonderful day, dude. You too, dog. Take it easy. Yep.